Hello there. We are ready to start a new project. This time we're using Granat Handed After Cotton. And it's in a bright new color called Freshly Squeezed. It has strands of orange, yellow, and a darker orange that I would say is coral. It's almost pink. <coughs> Pardon me. I have a little bit of a cold. And what we're making is just a standard granny square. It's on the Burnett Yarn website. And it's called um, Burnett Handicrafter Cotton Granny Square Dishcloth. And it's uh, an easy pattern. You can tell with these little squares if it's easy or intermediate or advanced. And I think that this one square actually means beginner. So that's beginner, then easy, then intermediate, and advanced. So this is a beginner pattern. <coughs> and what we're making is just a plain old granny square dishcloth. And the granny squares are something that every crocheter should know how to make because lots of times people will say, hey, you crochet, will you make me a granny square blanket? You know, so now you'll know how to make a granny square. And you always start off every crochet project with a little slip knot, <coughs> like I just made. So I'll show you how make, I'll make mine again. I just wrap it around my finger so it looks like a little X, like that. So just like that. And then when you pull it off your finger, it looks like a little pretzel. And then you grab the um, the strand that's you can hold it like that. If you grab this other strand, it'll fall apart, but if you grab that strand, it all stays together. That's where you put your hook underneath that little strand. And it makes a little slip knot. It'll slide up and down. That's why it's called a slip knot. Anyway, <coughs> so now we have our slip knot on. We're going to chain four. Slide the yarn over a little bit so you can see the stitches a little better. Chain four. One. Two. Three. Four. Now we're using a large hook for this project. It's a size J. So it's going to feel a little awkward with some of the stitches, but they want your granny square dishcloth to be very loosely crocheted, so that's why they've asked you to use a size J hook. So I did my chain four, so now I need to join with a slip stitch to form a ring. And it, it's not really important which direction your stuff is facing for this ring, because the ring is just going to be stuck in the middle. You can go in this way if you want. You can go in that way if you want. It really doesn't matter, as long as you join it into a ring, because you're going to be stitching into that ring. And this is going to be hidden underneath stitches, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. <coughs> you can join it however you want. Now it says to chain five, it says little note, it says note, chain five at beginning of each round will count as one double crochet and a chain two space throughout. So that's just a note to read. It's not anything you're actually doing right now. So now we're ready to move on to the base round. We've already finished the chain four with the slip stitch and we read our note. So now we're moving on to the base round. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. So now it looks like this. Looks like a music note almost, like a quarter note. <laughs> I'm a musician, so I think about music a lot for things. <coughs> I'm a piano teacher and an organist. And a, I used to be a percussionist a long time ago, but I haven't done that in forever. I don't even think I'd remember how to do it. So now it says, after that chain five, it says to do three double crochets and two chains three times in the ring. So we're going to do that. So 
so we're going to do a double crochet in the ring. You see how I did that? I went, I wrapped it, I go down in the center of that ring we made. And we're going to do a double crochet right now. So there's the double crochet. Now it says chain two. One, two. So there, now that's what it looks like. Now we need to do that. Um, Oh, I messed up. I should have done three double crochets. Do, do, there. Took off those two chains. So there's one double crochet. We need to do three double crochets. So we're going to do one more double crochet. And these are all being done in the ring. <coughs> there. Now we have three double crochets. Now we chain two. Chain two, one, two. There. Now that's what it should look like. <coughs> now we have to do that again two more times because it says three double crochets, chain two. And all of that's in parentheses. And then it says three times. So that means you have to do your three chain three double crochets and two chains three times. So here's our second double crochet. And there's our third double crochet. So now we chain two again. One, two, and now we're on to the third repeat of that three double crochets. One, <coughs> I'm going through that yarn. That's one thing about crochet, it eats up a lot of yarn. Two, Then we do two chains. So now we've done everything that was in that parentheses three times. We did the three double crochets and two chains. Three double crochets and two chains. And three double crochets and two chains. So now we can move on to the next part of the pattern. Because we did chain five. Then three double crochets, chain two, three times in the ring. Now it says two double crochets in the ring. So we do two more double crochets <coughs> in the ring. And you see how I slid that around? You can do that. It makes it all fit better because I can tell I need room for two more double crochets here. So here's going to be one double crochet, two double crochets. And those were done in the ring as well. So now it says slip stitch in the third chain of your beginning chain five. So we're going to do a slip stitch in the third chain of this thing here that we made at the beginning. Remember that long loop we made with the five chains? So you have to look for the third chain. So there's the first chain, there's the second chain, and here's the third chain. <coughs> So you're going to have to get under two loops in that. And I'm sure there's a particular way you should go into these, but I just go into the front of it. Now what you could do is tilt it this way and go under two loops. And that might look better. Yeah, I think that actually looks better. So let me show you that again <coughs> to join. So you have one chain, two chains, three chains. Here's the third chain. And so you see how your little edges are facing forward? Slant that out like this and then go underneath two strands just like that. I hope you can see that. Let me bring my light down. I'm going to do it one more time so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to make it real bright. the first chain and there's the second chain and here's the third chain and then it was like this to start with it was facing like that and so I turned it a little bit like this and then I stick my hook underneath two of those chains there two, two of those um, strands 
and it said there's one strand left that I'm going through, so I'm going right through the middle of that. See how I can move it up and down? So it's not just underneath it, it's stuck through there. <coughs> and that's where we do our slip stitch. To, so to do a slip stitch, you pull it through everything. So you pull it through those two, and you pull it through that last one. There. So now, if you look at what you've made, it looks like a little wagon wheel or something. It looks like a little wheel. We have the three there in a space, and we have a three here in a space, and a three here in a space, and a three here in a space. So it all looks, it, um, it all matches all the way around. Yay! <clears throat> so we finished our first little section. That's the base round. So I will see you in the next video when we'll be working round one. See you soon. Bye.